information this evening. If everyone could please join me and uh, uh, stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank everyone for being here. And I'm going to start out and just read the, read the, the short list of rules that are kind of uh, attached to the uh, community conversation this, this evening. And um, then we'll dig in. The purpose of this gathering is to hear from and converse with members of the public. The format is an informal discussion forum. No predetermined agenda topics will be scheduled, yet some rules do apply. Employee personnel matters are considered confidential and therefore should not be brought up. Uh, address the board as a whole, do not single out individual board members. The majority quorum of the board will be present, no official board actions will be taken. Decisions will not be made, votes will not be taken, official meeting minutes will not be taken. So with that, if someone could begin, step up to the podium and state your name. Where's the podium? Right there. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having this and finding out about it or for me. I just had a few questions and concerns that I'd like to bring to the attention that perhaps you already got aware of. Um, some of which in discussions which ironically, I was trying to look up who I talked to, and that was one of the issues I had was the Wi-Fi. I understand nowadays uh, schools are utilizing Wi-Fi and electronics and computers so much, but to find out the bandwidth or whatever is so difficult that kids have to stand or are told to go to different areas in the hall, hold their phones up, you know, try and get on a chair to find it. Um, to be able to access the internet, I guess probably because there's too many on at one time, perhaps, but that certainly just, that just came up now because I was trying to look it up and realized, oh, I don't have Wi-Fi here either, but that's only one of the questions. I'm just not sure, and I'm con my concern is the technology and where we're going. We've moved very fast and very quickly. There doesn't appear to be any consistency from my understanding between uh, providing information to the students and the parents. You have student canvas, you have uh, parent canvas, you have that other thing, uh, Skyward. Um, and trying to find out someone's grades within that or even get to it is you have some, some teachers using one, not the other. You have updates that aren't done. I know in December we looked, there were assignments from October that had not been uploaded. So effectively my son had no idea what grades he had. Uh, so that's why we came in and had a, had a meeting. And that was just something that I can't believe we were the first people to mention this, but I don't know if the, <laughs> our jobs are to teach and educate the students. And I understand the technology. I understand all of that. But if we're not giving tests back to people for them to correct, learn what they're, they've done wrong, which I asked about that. My son's not getting any tests back. He doesn't get any grades back. I can't visually see what he got right or got wrong. And so you don't have a standing point to go back over what they've even learned. So I asked some questions about that. I understand. They're afraid someone's going to take a picture of it and then pass it on to the next group or the next kids. Well, I believe anyone, <coughs> certainly anyone who was in college and definitely anyone who had an older brother or sister was more than well aware of the tests previously given. I know I was. I knew all the tests. But still, it's. I understand we're not, we don't want to give them the information. But again, to me, then you come up with a thousand different questions and if the kids memorize all set all thousand, great. You only put 50 on the test, but there's gotta be something with that. I'm trying to make it brief, but it's an issue. 
if you're not giving any feedback, you're not giving feedback until the end of the semester, it's already passed. People haven't learned because they didn't know what they got wrong to begin with. I would hate to see my 401k or portfolio be going through that, just finding out, hey, you're really not doing well. You're losing your returns are negative all over the place. But if you have no idea where in your portfolio is negative, how do you even go for it? So um, I believe that's pretty much it, just the updating quickly and somehow coming up with a consistency to be able to utilize and communicate the information and more importantly, what someone got wrong to review, which again, we have exams next week to review right quickly before that. I don't even know where to start to help, to try and help review when we have them. So with that said, a lot of the teachers did give study guides now. So that is helpful. Uh, thank you, that's, that's all I have. Thank you, sir, if I, if I could ask your name. Oh, Bud Sherman. Okay, thank you. But I'm, I'm wondering, I know this is a, typically the, the dialogue with the board, but um, clearly there is a process in place, you know, when you meet with the teacher and, and move things through the school. And I, I'm, I'm hopeful maybe that uh, a member of the administrative team would, um, you know, kind of address and just make sure that you're aware of, you know, you have a valid concern. And we just want to make sure that we're working it through the, the proper process to make sure it's addressed for your students as well as the others. I think it's a little more, I think it's a little bit larger than what you're aware of. That's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I, see. Um, I, I can't, perhaps we're one of the only families that are going through this. I highly doubt that. And again, the inconsistencies between where something is actually posted or where you find your homework. I've gone through the iterations with my son to see. And there's certain things he can't get to from student canvas. So he has to go into this other thing. And it's just, we make it more difficult to be able for them to even find their assignments than doing the assignment. And again, so. there is no feedback afterwards. So to follow up, do you, are you, do you see any roadblocks with the current process going through administration, which is why you're escalating to the board at this point? Or what, how can we help? I, I have brought it to the attention of, of the school. I've spoken with a few people. Um, that's why I was going to look at names. The names oh, are wrong. Right. Do you feel like your voice isn't being heard? I believe that this is where the forum it should okay. start to be heard, or someone needs yeah. to, because I can't believe it's gone. I, I candidly can't believe it's gone on this long. If this is truly the case, I'm really surprised. Got it. Well, that I think that puts a little more context. It does absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is, is there anybody in administration that can can speak to his concerns directly? Mr. Chairman and I met. Okay. So okay. That's that's some of the comments that he's alluding to. Okay. Uh, we talked about the bigger picture and kind of some of the some of the conversations and comments that we had about you know why they don't get the test back now, right? There there is a difference in how it was when we were in school and we talked through that those pieces. The the disconnect between the campus and Skyward is a challenging one. Uh, we use both systems. Uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily, um, uh, uh, you know, our, our staff are pretty purposeful about when they update and why they update. And they use Canvas heavily for student uh, interactions and then update grades when, when they feel appropriate. We're definitely imperfect. Uh, there are times when it goes on too long, but our staff are very good and, and you know, update daily. So we're, we're, it's, a, it's a growing uh, effort for our staff to, to add consistency. Definitely imperfect, but we're, we're working on it. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Thank you. And, and yes, we yep. did have conversations, and I do appreciate that. And again, I just think it's a it's something that a lot of people I certainly never would have thought of yeah. before our <coughs> conversation. And then it was, we may be moving a little faster than our feet can take. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm not sure if he's going to sit around at the end, but when we when we talk about future topics, future business, I think in one of the committee meetings, I'm not sure which one it belongs in right now, but Maybe we can dive into that deeper. Uh, probably, you know, probably, yeah. 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 We'll have more time to talk about that. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Amber Bauman, and I'm here with my daughter, Liv. She is a sophomore at Madison. 
proud graduate of 2021. Um, I really want to talk about the proposed policy change to technology. I think it's 649. But before that, I just want to comment. I also struggled um, learning how to navigate Skyward and Canvas. I have a, my youngest son is a eighth grader at Harlan Lakeside School District, and I have a 10th grader, a senior, and my graduate. Um, I'm not sure how to make Skyward and Canvas more compatible. I'm not, and I don't know the workings of why we use both. I'll tell you they do use Canvas at Madison. So a lot of students want to go to state schools. These platforms are used in colleges. It was a struggle, but I'm also glad they struggled here because they do not have the same supports to learn those platforms there. So I'm not saying that it shouldn't be addressed and I'm glad you guys want to address it. Um, but maybe just a word of encouragement because I've been where you're at and it is very disconcerting and hard and hard when you feel like you missed the boat. Why didn't I see this? How do it? But I, I do think there's a way maybe to have it done more smoothly. But I also think having these kids use these <coughs> platforms is hugely beneficial as they go on and leave Arrowhead. And it's part of why my daughter is so successful right now. Um, as far as the policy change goes, I feel like I'm back up, so I apologize. <laughs> um, I just learned about this this morning as I was heading to work. So I may be missing a lot of details, but I did call and talk with Laura, the superintendent. She encouraged me to come and have my books heard. So my understanding is that there is concern from our teachers in the tech department about um, keeping all of current, being able to support all the various technologies, and then also maybe some continuity for getting in the lab and doing standardized tests. My concern is I come from a school system right now that my now sophomore and eighth grader had five Chromebooks. They have broken more times than not. They do not work when they come back fixed. It takes weeks to get them back. My 10th grader just got a brand new laptop because his Chromebook that we own has not worked effectively for him his entire high school career. He is using his phone to take pictures of homework because the camera will not consistently work. And now that we are no longer in the school district, I have to try to maintenance a junkie Chromebook. So to me, I'm throwing good money after bad if I'm now forced to buy a Chromebook yet again. Chromebooks are great for some people. Chromebooks are great for some programs. My daughter is a biomedical engineering student at Madison. A Chromebook would never have worked for her in this school. Her programs in this school take 16 gigabytes or something to run. A Chromebook you're looking at and, and suggested, they prefer 32. I think your Chromebook runs at like four. So they won't work. So one of the suggestions is get a cart with laptops that the kids could use the laptops in Arrowhead engineering classes to do those programs. Most of her work for engineering, she did at home. So I'm not saying that these concerns aren't valid, but I really encourage us to look at the full picture before we just make a change. I think there might be a better middle ground. Something I said is, um, could we possibly look at saying as a district, we are only going to support XYZ technology, or we are only going to support the technology that we provide, i.e. A, a Chromebook. So if you opt to use a laptop, then that's on you. Or what laptop, maybe we support one laptop that goes for these types of students, like your STEM students who are running these bigger programs, one Chromebook. If you're a student, my second daughter, she never went into engineering. She's dabbled in the health sciences. She's dabbled in the psychology. She's dabbled in probably everything. Chromebook would probably honestly work for her. She doesn't have a major pick for college. My sophomore is using the same computer she got as a freshman. My sophomore at high school is not using the same Chromebook he got as a seventh grader. So I just think we talk a lot about choice in our district. We talk a lot about respecting parent rights. I feel like these are pieces we want to make sure we include in the policy. I would also like to just touch on the phone thing. I did talk to my daughter about it. I do not want to make 
I want to support uh, teachers in their classrooms, but I also think that in high school, some of these students are 18 years old. My senior is 18 years old. My son as a junior will be 18 years old. At some point, we have to help these kids have personal accountability. And when you're 18, you're technically not a kid. They are young adults with still need much guidance. And so my concern is if we put this blanket in no phone, we are not allowing them to exercise personal choice and responsibility. And I think this school did a very good job of preparing my daughter to manage her time, manage her phones. I think it's great to have guidelines. I don't think teachers need to have phones in the classroom. I know in choir, my daughter said they take attendance by making the kids turn in their phone. You don't turn in a phone. I said, what if the kid doesn't have a phone? She said, well, the kid's grounded off a phone, they turn in their calculator. So what if you're caught with your phone? Well, then that's another issue. That's not a technology issue. That's a personal accountability and responsibility issue. And that kid should be learning that here, right? Because if they're going to learn it in college, they're going to learn it at the cost of $500 a credit or whatever it costs. I mean, it's expensive. If they're going to learn it on the job, it could cost them their livelihood, or at least the job that's paying the rent. So I like that we challenge our kids to be responsible and be adults. I think we do a great job here. I also like that this board is so passionate about wanting to support our teachers and our tech that when they come with a problem, they want to have a solution. So please know, I no shade thrown to anybody, but I just want to maybe slow it down a little and make sure we are looking at all the pieces so we're not creating more problems or new problems when we're fixing different problems. That's it. Thank you, and, and, and also thank you for um, your your kind words to our fellow parents. Uh, I, I think uh, hopefully they they uh, they offer some encouragement for Canvas down the road. Guys, got a reprieve last week from the advice of what got us now. So here I am again. Um, I don't feel very prepared for this. This meeting because I actually uh, entered my 50 time for work, and so I haven't had a chance to review every single thing that has been posted agenda lines and all of the policies and such. However, um, I think that Thomas um, had a very a couple very good points. Um, that uh, we do for the as far as the cell phone policy and technology policy. My child, who is actually here tonight, because after discussing some of the proposed changes, was very upset to learn that they might have to continue working off of their Chromebook, which is what they're using in their school right now. Uh, because the classes that they want to take, they know are going to require better equipment. So, um, one, I do think that that is something that needs to be addressed. I don't think it can be a blanket policy to require everybody to buy that seven year plan of the Chromebooks. Um, Cell phones, I'm trying to agree for that a lot. Uh, cell phones, um, again, I agree with Ms. Long and I can think that, you know, we talk about parent engagement and parents should be teaching their children not to be answering their phones during the school day. You know, I'm definitely guilty every once in a while I have texted my child during the middle of the day. And then I get shocked when he actually responds because I've told him over and over and over, you don't use your phone when you're at work and you don't use it when you're in class. And so maybe he had a study hall, okay. But um, my husband, who cannot come tonight, is a teacher in Milwaukee, and they have tried to institute a ban on cell phones, and the students will not relinquish their cell phones when asked for them. So um, that then adds to additional time <coughs> away from instruction, because at some point, escalators have to call the principal or somebody down to deal with this. And you guys are looking at increasing, you know, focus on our instruction. And I think that it can be just as much of a distraction to try and go that route. Um, so again, Ms. Bauman, I think you bring up many things that she says, even though I haven't had it before. <laughs> um, uh, she said that if she really thinks that it would be a good idea to slow down and take a look at all these options or all these things that you guys Maybe if you have considered, maybe you haven't considered, maybe, you know, maybe conversation is a good place for you guys to be getting some feedback from the parents and some other involvement. Um, 
One thing that Ms. Bauman said, though, that I wasn't sure on is that it's specifically about like if the teachers come to you with a problem about technology, then you're, it's good that you're addressing it. But I'm wondering, did the teachers come up and ask for a ban on cell phones? In fact, I, I don't think that was where it was prompted. Um, I well, think there actually, was... it kind of began with uh, one of our community conversations, like the very initial one, I think. We had a back and forth, more so then than now, kind of. Um, and one of the questions I asked was, what do the teachers think about the cell phones? And I remember there were two teachers in the classroom, and they were both against it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's such a distraction. And later on in our meeting, we'll, in the actual school board meeting, we'll be getting to that point. But I did have a teacher survey done on the topic, mm -hmm. and I got a lot of responses. And almost 80% of teachers say, get them out of the classroom. 22%. You know, it was like 77 point something, 77.3 percent want them gone. 22.7 percent don't care with one way or another. But the comments were very revealing about cell phones. The word I heard the most frequently, they another question I asked was, what comments do you have regarding cell phone usage in the schools? Mm -hmm. And most of the answers include distraction. It's a total distraction. Right. Um, bullying. They're used to take pictures. Um, I read some, some of these about special needs kids, post them on Facebook, um, take pictures of people without their permission and post them and that type of thing. And the comments, the majority of the comments were also get them out of the classroom. They're a distraction. They uh, hinder learning. Kids aren't engaged. And another thing is the socialization of it. They, kids don't talk to each other either whether it be passing in the hall or in the lunchroom. They're on their phones. They don't know how to talk to each other anymore. I would agree too, but I also agree that that kind of is one of those things that needs to be discussed regularly at home as well. It's not just going to be fixed in the schools, you know. Um, I think you guys, uh, you know, if you're listening to the teachers in this regard, um, I would be curious then why then for the policy on curriculum, uh, why that when you were asking teachers about whether or not all required documentation should be up on uh, Canvas and everything, why you didn't listen to those teachers? Because it was about, I would say a similar amount, 77%, I think, were uh, said that they had already thought that they were doing enough and that they were including everything that needed to be documented and that the additional burden on them was going to be, in fact, that a burden. So when is it that you guys listen to the experts it seems to be flat sided. Well, I think in the case of curriculum, that's a total different animal than the cell phones, really. Um, we're in a business of educating children and also bringing parents into the picture to see what we are educating them on. Um, and most of the teachers were doing it already, posting yeah. things so parents could see it. Just, you know, very small percentage weren't. So we brought everybody on board. Mm -hmm. So there's total transparency so the parents can see. What the children are there. Okay, well, so I guess I guess I'm a little concerned about that still. I know it's um, past and all, but uh, you know, I was at the open house and there were not a lot of parents here. So if parents are trying to get engaged, I mean, the only the only way to do that is not just for you. <sighs> Sorry, you don't only have to do that online. You can get engaged. You can come into the school, meet all the teachers. All the teachers that I've ever met have been very welcoming, offered up any information. If I need help, if I need to reach out, they're always welcome to do that. So um, I do think that it's unfortunate that you guys seem to be um, picking when you want to listen to the teachers who are the specialists. I mean, I don't think that we have, how many other nine of you? Are you guys all nine teachers? Probably not. Darcy, I don't mean to interrupt, but out of respect, I think we might have some other people who want to speak if you yeah, want to Yeah, uh, that's fine. But again, that's something that you guys do need to consider, though. You guys are looking to have experts lead our kids, and yet you're not trusting them to do so. So much so that even our lovely superintendent is now resigning. And if you guys want to be able to retain teachers, good teachers, good principals, great superintendent that has made this school wonderful, you guys really need to consider that. I listened to one board member suggest after you guys passed a policy that it was the administration's problem to make it sound okay. 
when they uh, administer the policy to all the teachers. And that's really, um, that is an unfortunate way to approach it. I think that if you're going to make a policy that you know the teachers are not in agreement with, then you need to work with the superintendent on a reasonable way to have that administered. Thank so, you for your comments, Darcy. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to address is that um, <laughs> at one of our previous meetings, I noticed, um, I observed, there was a presentation by maybe a social studies club of some sort. And then there was also some public comments from some other students. I witnessed the board be very, very um, uh, active and interactive with the students from the social studies club. And yet when we had other students up here speaking during public comment, they were barely recognized. And it just so happens that there were two trans students that were barely recognized. I watched some particular board members just look down at their computer almost the entire time, and then discuss jovially with the other students. So I would like to ask if the board is willing to bring in a diversity and inclusion um, consultant to talk with you guys, because I think it's incredibly important that everybody be treated the same way here. If I could comment, you're talking about two different things. Uh, no, the, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm talking yeah, about. Let me let me answer, please. Uh, when you when the students came up to talk, that's during our public comments during our meeting. We there are rules that are surround that. We cannot comment on those on those discussions. They also comment to group conversation. Okay. Like I said, if they if they want to interact, they can interact. They can ask us questions. Uh, I, I, I highly, I, I take great umbrage to what you're saying about this board. I think that's absolutely untrue. I also think that <clears throat> your perception of the 80% in us taking teachers uh, sides only sometimes is absolutely incorrect. We had 80% of the teachers that agreed that they're already doing this. So we are listening to the teachers. We absolutely listen to the teachers. And here we have 77% of the teachers that are talking to us. This cell phone policy is months off. We're working on it, it's a beginning, and you've also already taken plenty of time. It's time for somebody else to talk. And I, I just want to add, add one other thing, because I'm pretty sure it'll be shown on camera, but uh, not to put Jim on the spot, but she recognized in at least two meetings, and I'm pretty sure that meeting as well, every student that stood up to talk about whatever the topic was, for mm -hmm. the bravery and the consideration and the actual presence that they brought during the speech, and uh, not to put words in your in your mouth, but what I remember actually encouraging more to do the same. So, well, that, I, I, that I as good. well take a little offense to what you had stated as a representation of the board because I think it's unfair. Well, I'm not allowed to point out specific members as part of the public comment here, right? So it was particular people that I noticed, and I'm not allowed to say that. So according to the thank rules. you, thank you, Darcy. Yes, but you didn't answer my question. Would you be willing to have an inclusion consultant come in and speak with you? All? I think that it would be beneficial for the board to community members. I understand that our staff is very, very good um, and is pretty supportive of all people, but I do think it's beneficial. Why Lots of companies do it. Why do you think it's beneficial? Why? Yeah. Because I feel like the trans students here are not being seen and not being heard. Thank you for the context. We'll consider it. Okay, thank you. Well, Sorry, did you want to say anything else? I, I was just going to suggest that it, that we'll take it under advisement. Thank you for bringing it to our attention and, and we'll, um, we'll discuss it. Thank you very much. I do have uh, names of people that can help in Wisconsin and also some of the people I'm flying. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got a couple minutes left. Anyone else like to step up? Hey, uh, so I was uh, browsing the uh, Arrowhead website and I saw that there was a change proposed uh, for uh, procedure 151.4. And uh, I think that this meeting has demonstrated why it's not a good change to be proposed. I think if 
Uh, you have a section where it's imperative that any concern can be addressed, that you get a guaranteed time to speak in. What we've seen here today is that the conversations with the community section is not uh, adequate for that. And, and I was just wondering if this meeting has at all changed your perspective on this uh, change. I think every meeting is a little different. Some of the meetings we have, the community conversation goes pretty long. A lot of times we'll extend some more time, maybe we not do well. A lot of times it's tough to even get people to, to talk during the meeting. Uh, conversation. And so, so each meeting is a little different. Mike, and would you agree? Have you been to? I, I could agree with that. Uh, typically, I find more that I uh, don't get to speak dur during the uh, conversation with the community more than I uh, am able to speak, but unwilling to. So, I think that in the case of 151.4, I, I, I really think that you guys should reconsider that. And um, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Brian. You. I think it's also a matter of respect uh, by community members to do what you're doing right now. Be concise to the point, um, get your point across, and then allow the stage for others. So thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but there are some issues that need to be fleshed out more and that you need to talk about more. Mine is, I came in here knowing that I wasn't going to talk more, but in the future, if this is passed, I probably will flesh out my public comments into this conversation with the community board because it is very important to me that I get that out there. So I think with the passage of this policy, that respect is kind of going to be lost. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just just to that point, though, I don't, I don't, I don't think it will because if I understand that proposal, it's during the actual board meeting where there isn't that dialogue, that interaction. I actually value this portion of the community conversation more than the other. Because it allows for this dialogue back between you and I, between you and Brandon, between you and Chris, that that just took place. This portion allows for that. The other does not. And, and truly, when we initially talked about offering uh, the community conversation, we you know we were in a bit of a conundrum. Do we make it an hour? Uh, do we make it 45 minutes? And and you can see tonight we've we've got a, a relatively good attendance for this portion of the evening. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we'll have four people, um, and of the four, maybe two will really want to speak. And so we have, in fact, um, ended the community conversation 10, 15 minutes early sometimes. So it's a it's a very difficult thing to gauge and know exactly what to do. Um, and, and it's really not uh, that we don't want to hear opinions. The, the reason we put the community conversation in place is because, in fact, we want to be able to exchange. Um, and, and we don't have to. And in fact, just, just so you are aware, um, it, it, the board meetings themselves, there is actually a state statute around the board meeting um, that says the board may institute the public comment section. We don't have to even have a public comment section in the board meeting. And, 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 and we want to, because again, we want to hear from the public. As uh, someone mentioned earlier, it's not that we can engage during that portion, but we do want to hear from you. So again, it's a, it's a difficult timing uh, decision on, on where to go uh, with the two, the two sessions. Yeah, I, I can see that. And uh, I think it would be beneficial to have a, a longer conversation with the community and maybe like have it be flexible for um, however many people want to speak. Um, I don't know, I, that's just something that I would ask you guys to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you Great. so much. Yeah. I know we're we're running kind of long and we're running into the into the meeting. Um, yeah, no, it's at the seven. I don't think it's at the close to the seven. Uh, we do, we do. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I get one quick thing is um, perhaps maybe on your agenda following instead of posting that your regular school board meeting will start at seven, you could have it say that it will start immediately following the community conversation. So that then you can go maybe a path a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, that's a great, great suggestion. 